Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This week, Kendall is getting her resection done, the removal of her tumor. So she's undergoing a pretty large surgery, a long surgery. What did they estimate, Brandy? Three to six hours, yes. three to eight hours, something like that? Yeah. That's gonna be a long time. You know, we met with the surgeon the other day and he ensured us that his goal was to not just get in there and rush through it to try to get it done because she doesn't want to do obviously any other damage to anything, but is, is to get in there, take his time, make sure as much gets removed as possible. And I'll, you know, go through sort of what they explain and what they anticipate for the surgery process to sort of entail, but, um, not an easy one for sure and it's long but i think in general we're all sort of excited about it uh excited to finally get this milestone over with kind of get past this phase because technically once the tumor has been removed she's in remission she's cancer free so they say now she'll have some additional chemo treatments and stuff to kill off any other microscopic levels that might still be left behind there is going to be some tumor tissue left behind um, strategically in places, things that they think are very high risk to remove, um, they will leave behind, but they'll also use guidance of the MIBG scan, which is what sort of shows the active cancer cells in the body. So there's a lot of factors that go into that stuff. And then she'll have to get a stem cell transfusion and other things afterwards. So we still got a long road ahead of us. And this is just sort of marking, I don't know, almost, we're almost halfway through this thing. We, we've still got a long road ahead of us. And I think some of the, the hardest is still to come. But anyways, we're in good spirits. We're super positive about it. And uh, we're just kind of hanging out, playing a waiting game uh, until tomorrow. Surgery isn't scheduled till first thing tomorrow morning, but they wanted to have her in here. They wanted to do blood work. They wanted to check things. She's getting ready to have a unit of blood. Her hemoglobin was a little bit low, so they want to get that boosted back up before surgery tomorrow. So we're just hanging out. We're getting ready to play a round of Uno Dare. I haven't played this version of Uno yet. There's, Uno has made like a pretty popular comeback here in the last year or so. I feel like there's like 20 different versions of Uno now. We've played a lot of them, but this is the first time we're playing Uno Dare. Dare. And Kendall's definitely gonna lose. No, I'm gonna win. I, I always so. win. You're I probably always gonna win. lose. I always win. But seriously, I don't want the camera in my face right now. I'm not wearing my eyes. It's been a pretty uneventful evening, but Kendall's been pretty productive. She built a pretty sweet Lego still starving. here. This is a pretty cool little diner situation. Daddy, I also want a Subway sandwich after. <laughs> so Kendall is starving. She hasn't eaten anything since breakfast this morning. It's now 10 p.m. And she has made me a list a mile long of everything she wants to eat after surgery. And it includes a Subway sandwich now, apparently. It also includes macaroni and cheese from Panera Bread and lots of other like random pizza from um mellow mushroom a cheeseburger from mcdonald's a, a brownie with ice cream and whipped cream on top and garlic knots from giuseppe's pork sandwich with a barbecue sauce okay that's it just those couple of things huh you're gonna be about 400 pounds when you're done um she got some blood earlier i didn't film any of that kind of stuff i think i've shown you know what that looks like in the past it's basically an IV bag uh, of blood and it just an infusion that goes into through her port now they've got her on some fluids we've had kind of a faulty IV pump that seems to be beeping quite often for no real reason it keeps saying air in line or that the line is clamped and none of which is true so hopefully this thing doesn't keep us up all night or I'll be requesting a different IV pump that doesn't beep all night because ain't nobody got time for that. You don't know what to do with yourself back there? No, I was definitely creeping in the background. 
Uh, Kendall and I are now going to sit watch some cops. That's our typical evening routine here and at home. We love to watch some cops because Kendall just likes to watch. Why do you like to watch cops so much? Because I like people to get tased and get bit by dogs. <laughs> well, how are you feeling? You got surgery in the Hungry. morning. Hungry. We've been waiting for this moment since December. December 18th. 30th. How do you remember that? Yeah, the 18th. What? How do you remember that? I'm smart. You ready for it? Yeah. Wanna get it over with? Yes, because I want to eat, man. <laughs> oh yeah, and I want ramen noodles and chocolate chip cookies, but they have to be warm. And a bacon gouda. All right, well, we're gonna watch some cops. We're gonna get some rest, surgery. Uh, I think they'll come get her about 8.15 a.m. So I'll see you guys then. All right, Kendall. Today is the day. And I'm so excited. Daddy. How are you feeling? Good. But I have another thing I'm adding to my list of food. Oh yeah, what's that? It is Milky Way chocolate. And a bunch of warm brownies with ice cream and whipped cream on top. And right. chocolate drizzle. You're gonna eat good for like the next week. Uh, the plan is that they will go in, they'll remove the tumor, they'll remove the kidney, uh, which I continue to forget that they have to remove the kidney, but it like it was fully involved in this whole thing and it's like killed off and hasn't been functioning. So they're gonna take the kidney, adrenal glands, lymph nodes, what else? That's it. That's it. I mean that's all they're doing. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a big day. Something that we've I feel personally I've like been looking forward to since day one it's like can we just get this thing out of there tacos add tacos good thing i've recorded this list because i want to reference back to it to write it all down How do you feel? <laughs> How many fingers am I holding up? Three. <laughs> <laughs> How about now? Change them on you. What do you think? Are you ready? You ready to go, baby? Yeah. Yeah? I okay. love you. I'm gonna I love you so much. All right, so Kendall is now in surgery. She went to sleep at about 9.45 a.m. I was in the operating room with her as she fell asleep in a very happy, giggly state. Uh, it was pretty, pretty funny. So everyone just commented on how impressed they were with her sort of positive spirit and vibes with all this stuff. So uh, I think that's really good. So anyways, we're back in our normal room up here, but we've got to pack things up and move down to the ICU um, for at least a night, potentially two nights. I guess it just depends on how recovery is going and all that kind of stuff. But I hate coming back to the room. There's always this eerie feeling coming back up here and there's no bed, there's no Kendall. It's, I don't know. I'm gonna pack some stuff up and patiently wait six hours. They've been really good about calling us every two hours and giving us updates and we just got the most recent update a second ago that said that they got the tumor is all out and that the G-tube is in. I don't think I mentioned the G-tube. She's getting a G-tube that'll help with feeding. 
her in some other future treatments. They're getting ready to close her back up and then she'll be about another hour or so. So we're gonna head down to the surgery room area to the waiting room and wait to talk to them. been <laughs> it's been a long day so after six hours Kendall got through with her surgery they they gave us those phone calls about every two hours uh, kind of giving us updates along the way saying hey everything's going great everything's going as planned uh, that sort of thing and then it was like hey we're we're wrapping up we're getting close it should be about another hour it was about another hour or hour and a half later the surgeon came out to the waiting room uh, to meet with us and the first words as he, as he sat down was, that was hard. And he went on to explain sort of the technical difficulties as why it was so difficult and that the tumor was back behind uh, certain things. And what was other, the other thing that was interesting was uh, the MIBG scan where it was lit up wasn't really even actually the tumor itself that was lit up. It was some lymph nodes uh, that were, you know, swollen lymph nodes that were taking up some of that MIBG and where it had kind of spread into those lymph nodes. So um, they, of course, removed that stuff as well as the kidney, etc. They installed a G tube into her stomach for uh, feeding. It'll help release some gases and stuff presently as well. So um, that's good. But they installed it really as a, they think they might need it later when she does the stem cell transplant and some of that sort of stuff. But presently, she's just kind of hanging out. It's 9.22 p.m. now, so we've been hanging out in here for a while trying to like make sure everything's good and you know that she's been stabilized and she's doing great. Uh, she's doing really, really well. We're just sort of pain management at this point. They did some nerve blocks uh, as well during surgery, which will prevent a lot of the like surgery pains, but there's still some other like the, the incision wound and things like that that the nerve blocks won't. Um, cover pain wise so she's on some morphine and some other stuff to kind of help that and so anyways we're very thankful to be through with that let's see how this goes over the next few weeks and how recovery looks all right I'm gonna take a shower and uh, go to bed <laughs> So you can eat. Once I fart. <laughs> so it has been a few days now and uh, we're just trying to balance this recovery game. There's a, a side of, you know, making sure that she isn't in any pain and keeping her comfortable, but also making sure that her body and her organs are waking up. Um, you know, on the pain side, let's talk about that. I think it's the most obvious. You know, she's got this big incision where they did the surgery. And then over top of that, it's got this bandage. And then she's got this vacuum pump that's coming off of it. And it cycles every so often. And it's, you know, kind of, I think, there to, to really collect anything that maybe needs to drain from that wound site. And thankfully, I haven't seen anything come through that. And uh, they've been really happy with the way everything looks so far. So that's really good. I think it's just a a just-in-case type of thing and then she also had a g-tube installed during the surgery which goes into her stomach and it kind of sticks out of her belly uh, and that's so that they can feed you know it's kind of like the port in her chest or an IV but it goes to your stomach so you can feed it's like a feeding tube if you ever heard that term uh, where they can you know feed her through that they can give her nutrients through that if she needs to uh, if future treatments, she's not feeling good, uh, doesn't want to eat, she's got nausea, she's throwing up, that sort of thing, it'll really help with those types of events. Um, presently, it's been nice for the recovery because they've got it hooked up and just sort of gravity draining her stomach contents. So instead of her throwing up, for example, it's coming out of this port of her stomach and then it's just draining into a diaper, which is kind of funny because Kendall has to keep getting her diaper changed. <laughs> So she's doing really well. Uh, this is kind of just updating you in the last few days. They've also continued to remove other things from her. She had IVs in her hands and in her arms. Um, all of them were doing different things um, from 
monitoring blood pressure to you know other medicines and and just kind of getting multiple things in her uh, so they've been slowly taking that kind of stuff out making her feel more and more comfortable obviously and then balancing the pain with that it's it's kind of a tricky balance because when they did the surgery they had to remove they had to pull a lot of her intestines out and manipulate a lot of her intestines and stuff and with anesthesia and you know she was under for like six hours your organs go to sleep as well and it takes them a while to really wake up and start to function again so she hasn't been able to eat in five days she's not happy about it she's pretty hungry five days tuesday and today is saturday and only for like three days yeah i know but uh, her gut really has to be working a little bit more than it is now. Um, they want to see her passing gas and that sort of thing as that intestines really wakes up and starts to move things along. And then they'll know at that point, like, okay, we can start to introduce foods very slowly. Otherwise, she'll try to overeat and she'll end up throwing up and that sort of thing. So we've been very cautious about balancing pain medications um, especially like opioids and things like that, like oxycodone, which she usually takes for pain medication. We haven't given her any of that. She has been on morphine quite a bit um, initially, and then we've backed that off, and she's not on really any morphine. She got some last night to help sleep because um, it does make her sleepy, and it, it removes that pain, gets her nice and comfortable, and we get a good night of sleep. Um, but really, it's just been Tylenol every six hours, and that's been the, the pain control management of just enough to kind of keep the pain at bay but not so much that those intestines and gut can't wake up and, and start to function so that's that's the ticket for us getting out of here now the other thing that'll help get the gut moving and get the things waking up and functioning is her getting up and moving around so we've been working on that and she's been making really good progress she gets up she's able to get into the bathroom get in and out of the bed she's kind of hanging out in this chair over here playing with some play-doh and stuff uh, working with the physical therapist, walking the halls, that sort of thing. So she's making really good progress, really proud of her. She's, she's kicking butt, so we're doing good. What do you have to say, Kendall? I'm starving. <laughs>
I got pizza because that's how I live my life. I tell you what, I couldn't be more proud of you. You've made a lot of progress just today. You also have been out, we went to the playroom earlier, to the atrium, and all kinds of things. You want me to pull the table closer? Let's pull the table closer to you. How was it? It was so good. Good? She even got dressed up for the occasion. I did. Got her hair done. Oh. And you look beautiful. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it hurts. You got a little cramp? Okay, day seven here. We've been here for a week now. Um, things are moving along. They've disconnected. Kendall from the IV pump and the pole and all that kind of stuff. She still has the wound vac on. So that was that prig purple thing that was kind of over the wound. It's got the tube coming off of it. It goes to a vacuum. My initial understanding was it was going to pull any kind of like leakage out. And I'm sure it does that if it needs to, but really I think it just keeps it airtight, vacuum sealed over the wound to uh, prevent whatever. Um, I'm supposed to promote healing or whatever so anyways that's the only thing that she's connected to presently so and it's just this little tiny black thing just carry that around with us so no big deal but that should be coming off tomorrow she's continuing to eat solid foods and doing re really well with that we went down to the atrium to the playroom earlier painted some pictures hung out and hopefully we can go home tomorrow Kendall got bored we've got some riding toys around the hospital uh, for them to kind of play with, get some exercise, get some moving in. Um, ooh, the pedals aren't in all the way either. Um, this is a new one to the floor, which is a little bit bigger. I actually looked at buying one very similar to this just for Kendall and donating it to the hospital so that the bigger kids have something to ride because a lot of the kids on this floor, you know, they're like three, four, five years old or much smaller. So the things that they have for them to play with and ride are much smaller. And thankfully T-Dog came, brought us some dinner some food hanging hanging out and uh we decided we wanted to go try to ride this bike because kendall was bored but we discovered there you go so we discovered the wheel is spinning inside the tire so thankfully in my bag why is it doing that multi-tool why is it spinning inside the tire if the tire's on the wheel we're about to explain that we're going to tighten you up so we got a pinch. I'm assuming there's just an inner and outer, or does it just need some sort of air? I mean, it's not going to pinch that down anymore. Is there like there's a, no tube? There's no Schrader. Yeah, there oh, is on the front. There is. It needs okay. A tube in the back. Should we put the rear wheels, wheels on the back? Yeah. And put the and that'll give it at least some drive resident mechanics here. We're going to get this thing tuned up and uh, we'll get Kendall doing laps in no time. We came out to the parking garage. The sun is right in my eyes. I was going to go to my truck because I've got my big compressor there, but you know, Travis, well, the cycling that he does had a little pump in his car, which was closer. So let's see if we can air these bad boys up. Get it back to riding. It is day eight and it is discharge day. We are just about free to go home. They removed Kendall's dressings and the wound vac from her incision. Let's check out the, look at that. My goodness, it's pretty big. It goes from there to there. I'd say six or seven inches. 
and then we still got the G-tube. That'll stay in for the next uh, four months or so. Dad, am I really awake or asleep when I take it out? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't want to be awake because then it's going to hurt. Yeah. She's done such a good job. The last thing we're waiting for now is for them to come and de-access her port. And then we're free to go. We just got to get all this stuff down to the car. All right. Hop in. All right, I think that is a wrap for the tumor removal. I couldn't be more proud of how Kendall has handled this and how tough she's been. Uh, I'm super impressed. I'm super impressed. I'm super proud of her. Uh, these kids are incredible. If you watch this whole video, I'm sure it was long. I have no idea how this is going to edit. I'm like thinking through what I've said, what I didn't say, that I forget to say things. That's just how it goes. You know, I'm doing my best to kind of make these videos, document this stuff, and try not to leave information out. But I also have to be present and in the moment and make sure that she's taken care of. So anyways, we're not out of the woods yet. We have a lot, uh, a lot of other stuff to do as it relates to uh, Kendall's situation. So if you want to continue to follow along, we've got stem cell transplant coming up, things like that. So if that's something you want to continue to follow, hit subscribe. Otherwise, we got some other fun stuff going on, some other boat upgrades to do. We've got RV stuff going on. Up, I've got a bunch of work to do on the RV, some cool, cool upgrades there. So, anyways, that stuff is still coming down the pipeline as well. See you guys in the next video. Peace. Shoot.